Hi, everyone. This is Christy Rich. This is Holistic Me TV. This is a brand new show on YouTube, and it is to empower women around the world with their health and wellness. So I am bringing on health experts for season one to empower you, to give you tips, tools, resources, and to let you know about these amazing women, these amazing guests and their stories. So today I'm very excited because I'm bringing on a expert who actually used to live in my hometown of Ridgefield, Connecticut. So since I started this show, there have been so many synchronicities, so much synergy. It has been amazing. You may have seen on a previous episode that I had a guest, the first episode actually with Stephanie, that she lives in Danbury, Connecticut, and I did not plan this. Again, I just found her online and she was right in my backyard, literally the next town over. And then another guest you will see a little bit later, she is in Reading, Connecticut. So you cannot make this stuff up when you are in alignment, when you're doing what you should be doing, you attract people that are right in your backyard doing similar things to help those with their health and wellness. So this has been a beautiful experience. So a little bit more about me as your host. Again, I am Christy Rich. I have been a holistic health expert and healer for over 18 years. I absolutely love the work that I do. I help women to overcome chronic conditions, chronic illness, and trauma through a holistic perspective, which means getting to the root cause and treating it mind, body, and spirit, and then through natural ways and natural remedies. So let us bring on our guest today. Today, Megan Callis. I'm going to read her bio so you can have a little bit more information about her. So Megan Callis is a neuroscience-based breathwork specialist who combines her extensive knowledge of applied neuroscience and breathwork science, spiritual insights, and a deep understanding of trauma's neurobiology to help people heal and lead more joyful lives. She empowers her clients to harness their breath's potential, enabling them to manage anxiety, combat fatigue, and address illnesses. Megan offers corporate and school workshops, teaching her breathing techniques to enhance calmness, productivity, problem solving, and adaptability. She works with clients in person and virtually across the United States. Welcome, Megan. Well, hello. It is hello. such a be here and I still I'm always going to be awed that you live in my very favorite hometown <laughs> <laughs> I know what are the chances I could not believe when you said I used to live in Ridgefield Connecticut I'm like Ridgefield Connecticut not Ridgefield New Jersey I kept on saying Ridgefield Connecticut you're like yeah Ridgefield Connecticut uh, and now you're in New Jersey so this is beautiful to have you on the show so thank you for being a guest on season one and so for those who are not familiar with you and the work that you do, can you share your story? Can you share your background of why you do the work you do today? Absolutely. And I can spend an hour talking about this. I'll try to <laughs> as I can. Uh, so I'm going to start with the fact that I come from a history of complex trauma myself. And that trauma predisposed me to be very sensitive um, and sensitive, not just to inputs in my environment, but also stress uh, mm -hmm. and, and the negative ramifications of stress. So my brain functions a little differently than I guess you'll say an average person. And that made me um, more likely and I did suffer from anxiety disorders and depression and suicidal ideations. Mm -hmm. I really struggled. Uh, and so that was always an undercurrent in my life. Uh, then throughout my journey in different positions and jobs, I really discovered breath work first as a tool to help just stabilization of the body and, and to function and, and fitness, sort of fitness orientation of breath. Uh, and then through my travels, I ended up studying um, basically applied neurology for a program called Z Health, uh, was introduced to breath in the components of how breath impacted our nervous system, mm. um, well as different brain areas. Uh, and then when COVID hit, I really became super interested in it. Um, respiration training, breath work just for health, how it affected every aspect of us. Uh, and then because I recognize how deeply it affects everything we do, how we feel, how we think, how we perceive the world, um, I decided to create this, this company, Boundless Breath, and, and bring breath work and the science of breath work, as well as the spirituality of breath work, to, mm. to and, 
it's been such an incredibly tool, incredibly important tool in my own um, healing journey uh, that I wanted to, to share it from that perspective as well as the science perspective so others could utilize it too. Beautiful, beautiful. I love the work that you do. So I'm so happy that you agreed to be a guest today. So I am all about science. I'm all about researcher. I'm a big researcher, just like you are. So can you share a little bit of the research that you've gathered over the years about trauma or breathing, anxiety, the nervous system, the brain, anything you want to share? I know that's a big, (laughs) big topic, but anything you want to share about your research for the audience? I'm going to, I'm going to go basically, um, a into the fact that yes, if we have had histories of trauma, complex trauma as children, as well as if our parents, particularly our fathers had trauma in their lifetime, it can, um, again, create circuitry in our own brains that, that uh, makes us function a little differently than, than others. And there can be consequently uh, a feeling of brokenness that comes Mm -hmm. from that and it's not it's neural pathways that have been created to help us survive uh in situations that that many others might not face and so what we have to do is is work within those systems and those pathways so let me just quickly if you don't mind and i know a lot of your audience knows this but it will help create um, a little framework as we continue to talk uh, particularly how breath can help us throughout navigating all all of this is that, you know, obviously we have a brain, all of us have brains. It has, um, we have our our central nervous system, that's basically our brain, and then our peripheral nervous system, which is all the fibers that um, that that come from and, and, and create pathways to everything else in our body. So within that system, we have the autonomic, um, and that's basically everything that happens that we don't think about, um our spleen functioning our pupils yeah. dilating all that stuff we don't control that that happens on its own and then we have this other part which is the somatic that's the part where okay i want my my hand to do a figure eight i want to breathe a certain way um that's that's the voluntary component now if we take that autonomic component two steps further that breaks again into two components and this is where most people have a lot of familiarity and that's the sympathetic that's your stress um, response. That's your fight, your flight, your flee. And now they've added a component, which is a freeze response. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the parasympathetic, which as most people know, that's your rest, your digest, your healing space. Yeah. And we live in a world that puts us predominantly in that sympathetic space. Yes. So ironically stressed out. And that impacts how our brain functions. When we are in sympathetics, um, we are not able to look at the world in its big format. We, our eyes dilate. We focus in. Mm-hmm. Um, in addition to the fact that, that obviously there's inflammation in our body, but, but our prefrontal cortex, that ability to problem solve, to think creatively, mm-hmm. really shuts down. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it impacts how we how we deal with whatever situation is, situation is coming to us. And so figuring out how to, I'm not going to say hack it, but, but work within that system and framework and find tools that allow us to, to jump from sympathetics, which we need, it allows us to focus in, to parasympathetics, which allows us to, as you do so beautifully, heal and figure out how to heal our bodies. Um, and, and for me, in a sense, heal some of that, what I always considered was brokenness, Mm. um, can be so helpful. So I just, I wanted to give that little umbrella framework because your breath, um, absolutely it dictates which one you're in. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can use breath as a tool to really bring yourself into states that are, are, are more conducive to your goals at that point in time. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for describing that. I think that is very important for our listeners to understand. So you say in your bio, you talk about traumas, neurobiology. So is that a little bit of what you were just discussing now? Or what is traumas, neurobiology? And what should we know about it? All right. So what I again, I want to put this in the simplest framework is that Again, trauma, particularly complex trauma. Now, there's a difference, obviously. There's the, the singular traumatic activities that can occur, and most people have different levels of trauma in their life. 
Yes, absolutely. Complex trauma, which which is really when you've got multiple factors coming at you, particularly at a young age, but this can also happen later in life. And it does set you up. So for example, like the amygdala, your fear center, if you will, which has a whole cascading effect in throughout your body is larger, more predominant. Your hippocamp, your hippocampus, which is your memory center is smaller. Um, mm. And again, these, these traumas can set us up to into neural patterns. Um, and loops, which for a lot of us feels like we can't escape from. Yes. And so the idea is recognizing a that your brain adapted to allow you to survive this. Yes. And it did something really good for you in in that adaptation. It's just that once those situations and circumstances have passed, it's recognizing okay, is there a way to sort of recreate new patterns? Yeah. Uh, and the, the beautiful thing about the brain and what we've learned really within the last 20 years is it's not static. It's not concrete. We can change it. Yeah. And we, can change, we can change those circuits. Oh, thank you for describing that so beautifully. I had all these little light bulbs go off. And also, I think you made it very clear because I think a lot of people do not want to talk about complex trauma. They just hear the word trauma and they hear big T and little T, but complex trauma is very different from trauma. And again, it needs to be held with care because again, as you said, it happens normally when people are children and they have a lot of different big traumas that are happening and that really affects the nervous system, that affects the brain, etc. So I want to ask you a question about something you just mentioned. So you talked about memory and trauma. So is that why you talked about the hippocamp hippocampus? Is that why a lot of people who have had terrible trauma especially long ago as children cannot remember the trauma. They just do not remember. It's like amnesia and maybe later on they'll be triggered and all of a sudden it will come back later. Absolutely. That's a big component of why. In addition, it, you will notice that a lot of people who have had complex trauma, um, their memory functions differently. So it's not just that they can't recall incidences of trauma, their capacity of of recalling just past events and experiences in general, oftentimes is limited. And it's again, really based on circuitries that is very different in terms of which pathways are activated um, at such an early age. And again, continues through adulthood. Mm, well, thank you for describing that. Cause again, the light bulbs are going off. I, I love talking about science and, and research. This is so important. Um, so people- I'm going to pipe in just yes, for a second. Anyone who wants to really get a clear understanding of that in, in a beautifully articulated way, go to Andrew Huberman. Um, he's a neurobiologist out in Stanford, um, has a, his own lab, Huberman Labs. And he does a lot of podcasts as well oh. um, about neurology. Um, and he has one that's exceptionally well done about the trauma response. And so if people want to really dive in a little deeper, a lot deeper than I am right now, because I want to keep this sort of just open, yeah. um, it's a great resource. Beautiful. So Huberman Labs, you said? You got it. Okay, perfect. All right. And I think you described that very well. Some people have issues in the present with memory because of the trauma that they've been through. So then they can't remember, oh, do I have a meeting today? Oh, what is the meeting, et cetera. They, they can't quite line it all up. And that's, again because of trauma in the past that hasn't been resolved. So can you describe a little bit of the type of breathing techniques that you teach your clients? What type of breathing styles do you teach? Uh, that's challenging to answer because there are over 400 different breathing techniques. Wow, that's a lot. And I think a lot of people, you know, they know maybe box breath or they've gone to a class where it's been a high ventilation based class and music and, and big breath and just associate breath work with, you know, one or two techniques. There are, as I said, over 400 different techniques. And what the science really shows us is that we need to customize our approach and the techniques we use with each person, that there really is no one size fits all. Just yeah. as everyone's history and experiences are different, their brain and nervous system is different. So how they're gonna receive this is going to shift. Um, so I cannot say, you know, here are your techniques, go and be. Um, it needs to be customized. 
And so you can orient it, you know, for example, there are techniques really designed to get you into that more healing state, that resting state. And those are going to be techniques that are more, you know, exhalation based, longer exhalations and so forth, um, rhythmic breathing patterns, uh, deep, slow breathing patterns. So those really generally serve well with a, a large portion of the population. But, that, but there are others, and if you've got fatigue, if energy is something you're looking for, then patternings that's more intermittent hypoxia, high ventilation, small doses of that really help um, create states where, where energy production increases and so forth. So it, it all depends on what your goals are. So if sleep is your goal, those are going to be certain types of techniques. If addressing anxiety is your goal, those are going to be certain techniques, energy, different techniques. Um, brain health, cognition, different techniques. So it really, it, it's it's so vast and, and it's fun because it's great to be able to have so many different tools at our disposal and yeah. they're basically all free. You know, one of the things I love about this field and forgive me for uh, upsetting anyone, it's not pharmaceutical based. Mm -hmm. It's a free, you know, obviously you need generally a guide, someone to help you figure out what serves you best, but this is your own body. Yes. Your, your body to heal yourself. Yes. Uh, and so I think it's, it's something, especially as we recognize the brokenness of our, of our medical uh, establishment, forgive me again, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm saying anything that offends, but I think we, we start looking for holistic ways of, of really healing ourselves and, and not just approaching symptoms, but really getting to the core and, and becoming fully what we can be. Yes, beautiful. So one, I don't think you're offending anyone who's <laughs> watching Holistic Me TV because this is all about holistic health and wellness, women's health, and also the pregnancy journey. So we are emphasizing how important it is to get to the root cause. And again, like you said so beautifully, to realize we're all individuals. And that means we need an individual approach to wellness, not a cookie cutter. Here, take this pill or here, do this treatment, whatever. It's really realizing, like you said, we all have different nervous systems. We all have different trauma we've experienced. And so we need to really look case by case to the person's health history and where they are right now to determine what they need. So I am amazed that you know 400 breathing techniques or even that there are 400 breathing techniques that blows my mind. Um, but it's beautiful, again, that you realize it needs to be holistic. It needs to be an individual approach. So Thank you for the work that you do. And so can you describe a little bit more? So I know that there are many people and I've had many clients who have had trauma in the past and they cannot breathe deeply. They have very short, shallow breaths. And then I will take them through meditation and help them. But even those who have done a lot of work already on their healing with their trauma and they feel like, okay, I'm pretty good now. Like I can really cope with it. Still, I find that oftentimes they still cannot breathe slow and deeply. So can you talk a little bit about this, why that is, uh, perhaps from a science background and also through the work that you do, are you able to help them to breathe slower and longer and to find that peace and to find joy again? Excellent, excellent questions all around. All right, so uh, when... I'm not sure which part of this I want to tackle first. Um, science on breathing uh, is still very new and, mm -hmm. and very limited. So I want to say that from the get-go, that there are so many studies that need to be done. And so we're, we're extrapolating, and I'm extrapolating um, from what we've got available to us. Um, what we do know pretty clearly is that respiration and anxiety go hand in hand. So for example, um, people with COPD, people with asthma absolutely have higher um, degrees of suffering from anxiety disorders. Now, when we're in traumatic experiences, um, again, complex or, or however, when we're, let's, let's put this differently, when we are in stressful circumstances, our breathing changes automatically. Yeah without us desiring it, it just happens because our body is once again, preparing us to fight or flee. 
It's mm -hmm. preparing us to survive that particular situation. And so that breath is going to be more shallow. That breath is going to be, again, more open mouth. We're looking for that oxygen. We're looking for that, you know, that immediate capacity to, to bring oxygen to our big muscles, again, getting us prepared. To see the cool line is going to be, it's one of the reasons I always find this one interesting. If you ever find that you're in a stressful or anxious state, your body can feel sort of jittery. It feels like, okay, I, I just, I can't contain the tension. That's because the acetylcholine it, from your brain has gone into your muscles. Again, getting it ready to run, getting it mm -hmm. ready to move. Yeah. And if we don't, that builds up, we don't digest it. And so it leads us in that space. So with our breath, again, we've almost trained ourselves to always be prepared. Mm. Always be prepared for action. And we shift our respiration system um, moves into a higher ventilation based chest, mouth often based breath. Uh, and so even when we're not in stress, stressful situation, or as you, you know, said, have dealt with a lot of the traumas, our brain and our, our respiratory system and the respiratory centers are still working within those patterns. Mm. And so it, we do need to, this is where breath work is interesting because yes, there are techniques to address when you are triggered, when you need sleep, when you want energy, et cetera. There are also different techniques designed to change our everyday respiration and make it more optimal and make it so that our respiration is keeping us in a healthier, coherent state versus a stress state. And okay. yes, very specific, Buteco. Um, so Buteco, Dr. Buteco was a uh, Ukrainian scientist and medical doctor, uh, interestingly enough. And he has, he's passed away, but his, his institute and his programs live on. It's now um, being led by Patrick McEwen in Ireland, which I love with my mm. Irish. Oh, but he, I am too. <laughs> so his techniques really are designed to help move us into more optimal breathing, that breath that is slower, mm. that is that is quieter, that leads us into that that more peaceful space. Um, so yes, there are absolutely techniques designed to do it. And once again, circling back to Andrew Huberman, the neurobiologist, he just did a study, and one of his particularly favorite um, breathing techniques, which is called the physiological sigh or cyclic sigh. Also, when it's done five minutes a day, starts moving your respiration into that slower, more optimal, mm -hmm. while also improving mood, improving sleep has a host of, of benefits. So for some people, <clears throat> excuse me, who have experienced trauma, and again, they have the shallow breathing, and they've been doing a lot of work on their trauma, could it be just that they need to practice more breathing deeply and getting the body used to breathing deeply and feeling safe? Uh, without a doubt, you, I believe personally that you need to retrain that system. You need to, you need to actually, because we have chemoreceptors in our brainstem, part of this respiratory center that basically based on how much carbon dioxide um, we have and, and the acidity of our blood triggers inhalation, they can become, mm -hmm. it's very scientific. They can become overly sensitive to carbon dioxide and trigger that, you know, phrenic nerve down to the diaphragm, take that big breath, um, you need to retrain them. Yeah. And, and, but I also want to say, we have to be careful here because I've had clients with, with trauma where you work with certain protocols, including boutique protocols, and it actually can increase anxiety. Yeah. You have to and be very careful with trauma. You have Careful. And so you also have to recognize once again, just as we said before, there's no one size fits all. Yes. So you have to a, recognize breathing in particular can absolutely trigger trauma responses. So it's yeah. really important to work with practitioners who are trained in, in trauma. In addition to the fact that it's really important to recognize there are multiple tools. Some serve some, some serve others. Yeah. And so you know, playing within that, that realm is important. 
Yes. So I just want to star this for the audience who's listening, that if you have trauma, it can still be unresolved. It can still be in the body. It can still be in the bo- in the muscle memory. So you still need to heal it. And for other people, it is, again, retraining the body, retraining the body to breathe deeply. It's okay. You're safe. Everything's okay. The trauma has passed. So it really depends on where you are, who you are, what you've been going through. And just to give a little example, I had a client and she had been studying this breath that was very fiery and it was very energizing and she loved it because she didn't have to have coffee. And so it would get her going in the morning because she had kids and she had a busy life, but it was reactivating her trauma. So she was having these episodes where she was literally passing out, like she was literally losing consciousness and ending up on the floor and her child would find her. And, you know, being a medium and being a healer, I was able to tap into her energy and actually feel it before her session. It was very powerful for me to feel it because I really feel what clients are feeling to get a sense of how I can help them being clairsentient, I actually feel what they feel. And so I then guided her to a slower breath. And she was actually resistant because she had the practice and it felt good for her to do this energizing breath, even though it wasn't good for her nervous system, even though it was sending out flares of, oh, I'm not safe. Oh, we're going back to something that happened in my past that wasn't safe. So again, it's very important for people to realize, again, even if Uh, A breath makes you feel good. It may not be right for your nervous system. And again, it's important to work with someone so that you are guided so that you do, again, what's best for you. I am so, so, so glad you said that. Right now, there is a a huge explosion, if you will, of high ventilation-based breathwork practices. That's what she was doing. Yes. Now, high ventilation-based breathwork practices in small doses, so to speak, can indeed be very useful, even in cases of trauma. But right now, A, the science is incredibly limited. B, the science that we do have pretty much makes it clear that it's contraindicated for people who have panic attacks, who have anxiety disorders, that it, it, for epilepsy, seizure, you know, those with epilepsy, those with Mm -hmm. cardiovascular issues, those where, you know, a cerebral blood flow, it has been limited. Um, it can it can create psychotic episodes in those predisposed to this. Uh, there's not enough practitioners, I believe, right now who know the science, who have studied it, and therefore there is, the, as I said, there's an explosion of this one particular practice, which can, in certain circumstances, be incredibly healing, emotional release. Um, it, it has great potential. But it also needs to be very controlled, very well uh, managed, is and pretty much, unless it's in a clinical setting, not utilized in certain populations. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, again, I really want to caution everyone who enters into breathwork. It is an extraordinarily powerful technique and tool. Very um, powerful. Or- very for so many things, very effective for trauma, very effective for cardiovascular disease, very effective Chronic for illness. so many things, um, anxiety, mental health issues, et cetera. But again, there are certain techniques that are great for certain populations and certain techniques that are dangerous for certain populations. Yeah. And so recognize its power. It's powerful. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. And again, it seems so simple. You don't think it has that much power breathing, but again, we're in a society that's like, go, go, go. Don't breathe. Just keep on going. So to breathe fully can really bring some things up to the surface. So again, just want to start this one more time, because what you said is so important that there are some breath workers out there right now teaching breath that is very trendy, but not necessarily healthy for everyone. So there's someone who I know who's a coach who does, again, this very fiery breath. And I tried it and it really didn't feel good for my nervous system. Like, ooh, okay, I'm glad you've got a lot of benefits from this. But I'm like, you're teaching the same thing to everyone. Again, not realizing everyone's different and unique. So again, we must do our research, finding the right person to work with. And again, someone who's done the research like you, I believe research is so important. And again, a lot of people are not doing it and it's available. It's again, free, go on Google, go on your search engine. You can find so much, a wealth of information out there to support you. Absolutely. And I really, for those who are listening, 
I also invite you to reach out to me to answer questions. I can also say, hey, look, yes, there's this research, but there were only 24 people who were involved in that particular study. Right. Um, also, you know, as you're moving through and looking at this research, doing so with a, a real clinical eye. Um, so I'm happy to help guide and, and, and provide insights and so forth on that. Beautiful. Realm. I'll take her up on that, everyone. That's a great <laughs> offer. Beautiful. So let's talk a little bit about rewiring the brain. So you mentioned that. And first of all, what is that? Some listeners may be like rewiring the brain. How are you going to do that? That sounds kind of painful. So I have had experience, you know, doing NLP. I studied NLP. I've also, you know, had NLP sessions. So I understand this. But for those who are not familiar, what is it to rewire the brain? What does that mean? And why is it important? Uh, again, I'm going to use more generalized terms here. Yes. And more, but sometimes it helps to put it in a framework. And you're so right. When I say rewired, to me, that's that's a miracle. That's an amazing thing because we always thought our brains were 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 you know set in stone. Um, and so when I know and the science shows that we we can rewire, that's optimism. That's hope for me. But for others, it sounds really terrifying. <laughs> so when it comes to our brains, our brains work in certain patterns and circuits. Uh, and so I like to think of it as we have certain patterns that are like the brain canyon. These are patterns that have been going on for years and years. And so the neural connections, the way we fire is very well established. And so this is what our brains do automatically time in, time out over and over and over. Now, for some cases, that's really good. Those patterns are very healthy, um, both emotional, physiologically, et cetera. There are other patterns, again, particularly if it's come from space of trauma, where it's not helpful for us anymore. It's not moving us into physiological states or mental states that serve us. So how do we change that? And so what, what they have found, and this is another neurobiologist, neurobiologist, his name is Jack Feldman. He's really the leader in this. And he's out in UCLA. All this good stuff in Brat seems to be happening out in California. Um, but, but what he has found, and again, I'm going to try to put this in, in, in a way that's, that's relatively um, digestible, is that think about our, our breath as a wave. You know, we inhale, we exhale. We have this specific pattern with breath. He is finding that our brains and the way neurons fire and pathways follow, fire, follow our breath. So they will follow based on the inhale, follow based on the exhale. And so we have, and as you mentioned so beautifully, in cases of trauma, a lot of us have created specific breathing patterns, these high ventilation, chest, waist patterns. So our brain follows that pattern. If you, and this is the theory at the moment, but it seems to be supported more and more by, by science, you change the way you breathe, that starts breaking those old patterns and moving into these newer patterns. And so it's almost, and this is where it's gonna sound scary, it's almost like electrical shock therapy. They used electrical shock therapy in mental health Again, because neural circuits, they couldn't break. They weren't able through medicine, through therapy, mm. to show patterns. So boom, here's an electrical shock. Your brain is an electrical organ. And it's to shift the patterns. Well, I don't know about you. I think I'll take breathing over yes. an electrical yeah, shock. Yeah, definitely. I'm terrified of electroshock <laughs> therapy. Terrified. I must have had that in a previous life. Uh, cannot so, believe they do that. Yeah. But- but that's, once again, it goes into the power of our breath. So we change our breath. We change our brain. We change which neurochemicals are, are released and created. We create the, a different way of moving through the world. We create a different way of perceiving and, 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 and synthesizing information. Mm. Uh, what, a, what a gentle yet powerful tool to shift us into well-being. Mm, absolutely. So beautiful. So beautiful. And I can say from personal experience how much breath work has helped me. So I had a debilitating chronic illness for 15 years. I was misdiagnosed for 14 of those years. 
and finally got to the root cause and found out it was heavy metal toxicity. I had the highest level of lead and mercury my doctors had ever seen. No idea how I got it. And so I went to heal myself naturally because I'm like, I'm a healer. Let's heal myself naturally. I did the research and I found food that I could take that would chelate, take the heavy metals out of my system. And whenever I tell my story, people are always like, what did you take? What did you, what did you take? They're not like, what did you do? And so I realized again, intuitively, because this is before I started working with clients, that it really had to be a mind, body, spirit approach, not just working on the physical body, even though I had so many physical symptoms. Oh, it was a long, long list and it just seemed to be growing. But I knew that I had to also help my mental well-being and also lift myself up spiritually. So I started meditating for the first time ever in my life. And I meditated, <clears throat> excuse me, twice a day for 20 minutes. And I was breathing so slow and so deep that my teacher was like, wow, this is a lot slower and deeper than I'm even used to doing. This is great. Like you must have done this in previous lifetimes. And even though I had a chronic illness for 15 years, even though my doctor said it would take at least a full year, if not longer, of chelation therapy, which I did not do, which is um, taking substances and drawing it out of your body that way through medication, I did it 100% naturally with food and meditation. And that is how I overcame my illness in one month. In one month, meditating twice a day for 20 minutes, long, deep breathing, inhaling and exhaling, not doing creative visualization, just inhaling and exhaling. And the results are amazing people. So I want to star this because again, everyone's like, what did you take? I want you to know what you can do. You can breathe, you can meditate. And I know you're not specifically talking about meditation, but breathing, but that's what I was doing through the type of meditation was really just focusing on the breath, tuning everything else out, letting all the positivity come in, the inspiration from the divine, which I wanted to ask you if that happens with your clients, that the divine downloads start to percolate in, they get clarity and see their life in a whole new way. But breath is powerful. I just want everyone to know how powerful breath is. You can overcome a 15-year chronic illness naturally. I, I, I love, I love, A, I love that you did that. I love that you, you experienced the power of breath and meditation because where I love the bridge of all this is that, yes, we're, we're starting to see the science that's, that's, that's building where we're getting more research in terms of what breath does to our body and our brain. But also the one protocol that I think and as I said earlier, there's very few that I would say universally serves everyone, but one that is close to it is that deep, slow breathing. Yes. I think one of the reasons why it serves so well is that it does allow us to find that stillness, yes. that presence. And when we are still and when we are present, then we have access to divinity. We have access to our higher power. We have access to infinite wisdom. Yes. Uh, that access to infinite wisdom not only allows us to figure out our next steps and stages in life, it also allows us to align with that, which is, you know, that's where healing takes place. Yes. Yes. And to remember that we are divine. So we are spirit in a human body having this experience, but we are divine. We come from the divine. So to connect with that again and to remember, and again, just through that slow, deep breathing, I felt such peace. And before then I had been really stressed. I had a very uh, stressful job. I was actually an actress in New York City before I became a healer. So I really needed to calm my nervous system down because I've been pushing for becoming a famous actress. I was really pushing, pushing, pushing. So to breathe, you can relax your nervous system. You can connect to yourself again, and you can tune out all the other noise, which is what I really needed to do and just go inward. Very That's peaceful, very magical. What's also ex it just extraordinary, and James Nestor talked about this in his book, Breath, um, the art of the law or the law science of the art. I always confuse that portion of it. James Nestor Brett, look that part up. Um, 
but he talks about the 5-5 five, five breath. And so the 5-5 five, five breath is breathing in for 5.5 seconds, breathing out for 5.5 seconds. This is an element of deep, slow breathing. And what he discovered is a lot of spiritual traditions and prayers follow this. So oh. Hail Mary, the Eva Maria um, in Buddhism, Om Mani Padme Hum, that particular yes, chant. I Om, love that. The Om is, is said and utilized follow a 5.5 breath. Hmm. So there were, there's ancient wisdom here in that pattern. So we're learning the science of what that does for us in terms of oxygenation of the brain, blood flow to the brain, cardiovascular health, all that stuff. But there's wisdom that, that I feel is the breath that really helps us connect. Oh, beautiful. I love that you shared that because I know you've done a lot of research on spirituality and other ancient religions and cultures. And that is so telling that this wisdom has been around for a long time, that so many cultures have been aware how healing the breath is, how healing it is to connect to the divine, these mantras, etc. And in a way, with our busyness, especially with Western society, I think we've forgotten. I think we've forgotten so much that has been passed down for, you know, hundreds of years. Do you want to talk? Go ahead. No, I, I just want to add one component to that is, yes, I mean, the breathwork practices, many of these have been around for thousands of thousands. Yeah, thousands of years. Yeah. This is not, a lot of this is not new. Yeah. Um, the science is new, but the practices have been around for, for a very long period of time. I, I really want to invite people to absolutely play with, and I use the word play because there are, you know, I, I want this to not feel onerous, but instead have a level of curiosity with it. But that slow breathing practice, you know, anywhere from a 4.5 to 6, particularly now in the world we are in. Because mm -hmm. in a world that is in chaos, mm -hmm. um, that is, is massively shifting and changing. And we ourselves, so often our bodies and our, our, our souls are in, feel as not our souls, I don't think there are souls ever in chaos, but our bodies and our brains are in chaos. And it is a time where when we start bringing these tools, breathwork for me is one of them. It's, it's going to be different for others. But these tools that allow us to slow down, allow us to connect with divinity, allow us to remain peaceful, that radiates. That does not just impact ourselves. And the science is beautiful on this too. That impacts our the people around us. Yeah. That starts impacting the globe. And so yes. the ripple effect. The ripple effect. And, and HeartMath Institute and their global coherence is a great example of this, if anyone wants to look into it. But we can heal ourselves, our planet. Yes. Flow, uh, that happens through presence and peace inside. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's all breathe, everyone. Let's send more peace to this world. Again, there's so many people these days with so much anxiety, stress, illness, et cetera, and so much uh, grief and, and trauma and violence, unfortunately, around the world. So if we can breathe to not only heal ourselves, but to heal the world, why not breathe? Why not start today? Yes, 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 yes. Wonderful. Anything else you'd like to share about the benefits of breath work? Every single system in your body is impacted by how you breathe. Mm -hmm. um, your immune system, your heart, your cardiovascular, diabetes, um, your obviously lung function, dementia, Alzheimer's can be, you know, there are, there are tools and techniques. Um, every system in your body impacted by breath far more than you recognize. And so when we start moving into shifting that, it's a just an extraordinarily powerful healing modality. Uh, I also want to say it's not a panacea and each one of us is different. And each one of us needs to listen to ourselves and our bodies, our minds, our heart, our souls to figure out what, what practice serves us. 
And so I just invite people, yes, come in, play with this, you know, learn, be guided, see what serves you. But also, you know, there's no one size fits all and whatever speaks to your soul, that's exactly what you should be living. Beautiful, beautiful. So can you share what it's like to work with you? What do you do in a session with your client? So my first session is a pretty long one because I'm not just looking at breath. I'm also looking at the nervous system. So mm. how's your system, your vestibular balance system, about, you know, brain stem, because if there are certain patterns that are not optimal there, that can actually contribute to states of anxiety that can mm. contribute to pain, that can contribute to illness. And so I, I look at breath as well as these other, these other systems. Uh, and then provide tools and figure out, and I have a protocol to make sure that that tool is being received by your nervous system in a positive way. Uh, and then we go from there and it's, it's a combination. Sure. I'm, I'm giving you techniques. Sure. It's almost like I'm dosing breath and I'm dosing neurological drills, but it's also us relating as one human and one soul to each other. And, and being fully present to one another. I'm on this journey too. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so I think when we meet soul to soul and person to person and, and truly see each other, um, that's, it's in that space that, that a lot of more healing can take place. Um, and so I do this both in person and virtually. And uh, that's, <laughs> that's yes. how I And who are your clients primarily? Oh, goodness. Um, I do not have a specific, I seem to at the moment be a lot of people within the, the 45 to 60 year age group seems to be a big population coming to me right now, but I've worked with seven year olds, um, because they've had orthodontal issues, oh. um, breathing impacts facial structure and, mm. and all that. So I've worked with seven year olds on that and, and hyperactivity. So I've worked with little ones oh. in that up to a 94 year old with lung cancer oh, um, wow. and so it really it depends but right now those who are suffering from anxiety who just feel overwhelmed by the world um i'm seeing a lot more of that right now and of course um there's a reason to feel anxious yes um, it's a lot right going now. on right now a lot a going lot on. On. and so when we learn tools to help us navigate that and find resilience um it really makes a difference. Mm. And I'm sure within the last several years with the pandemic, et cetera, you've seen a, a greater need for people to do this breath work that they really uh, are struggling. And a lot of people who have long COVID. Um, yeah, long COVID as well. Because that's, you know, obviously respiration has been, especially the beginning phases of COVID was a huge bit. But there's so many ways that hits the system as well as just psychologically having that um, period of time in our world uh, has, has created some anxiety and, and, and discomfort, if you will. Mm. And probably chronic illnesses have gone up too within the yeah. last several years. Because again, yeah. people have been going to the doctor, a lot more stress, stress influences illness, et cetera. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, you know, inflammation in the body that creates cascading effects. Yes. So you help those with chronic illness, you help those with anxiety, you help those with long COVID, you help those with anything that they need help with, trauma, et cetera. Yeah. Wonderful. So it's, 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 there's a big basket there. <laughs> yeah, there's a big basket there. This is so helpful for so many people. Which shows, again, that breath really impacts all these different systems and can be used to help. Uh, right now, truly, I think anything, anyone coming in with anxiety, that's the big guy, um, yeah. because it is the, it's one of the world's biggest mental health issues. It's one of the world's biggest health issues. Um, and as our world gets chaotic, it's tricky to navigate. And so using your breath so instantaneously, you can handle a situation when you're triggered, um, as well as, as you said so beautifully, using your breath to connect to, to something higher than yourself. Um, that yeah. divinity just is an extraordinary tool. Beautiful, beautiful. And so with your work, you also do help them to connect to the divine and to their divinity and to have these amazing downloads and to connect with joy. Can you say a little bit more about how you add the spiritual element to your breath work and also 
help them to return to joy? Uh, so the spiritual elements, uh, keep in mind, some people are less receptive to that. Sure, of course. And, and so if they are, that's fine. We stay in the realm of science. And those, but I tend to veer a little bit more into the spiritual because I think there's so much healing there. Yeah. Uh, that's, we are unlayering it and, and we are unlayering so much um, when we move into that realm. So what I generally do there is, again, it's so fascinating to me because this deep, slow breathing um, is used in a way where you can scientifically connect your breath, the rhythm of your heart and your brain into a coherent pattern. Mm. When you're in that coherent pattern, and of course, the people who are talking about this talk less about the spirituality part, but that's precisely when you're connecting with divinity. And so yes. I find that when people, um, and I have, I have devices actually that help recognize when you're in this pattern, there's a feedback mechanism. Hmm. Um, but when they are there, it is extraordinary how in that space, all of a sudden, all of that anxiety, all of that fear, all of that tension, all of that pain disappear. It disappears. Yeah. yeah. And so for a lot of us and with my clients, they, it's a process of bringing them there in little doses, little three minutes of this. So they get a taste of it. They get to experience it. Um, and so eventually starting to, particularly using their breath, to be consistently in that almost meditative divine connection. Yes. Beautiful. And, and because we are, we are always the, the divinity, the, our soul, our divine, our light is always there. We yes. have access to it. Yes, always do. Yes. <laughs> it's just that, you know, we, again, it's like we're layered. We have all this layered on. Yeah. And, you know, finding the tools. And for me, breath, breath is spirit. Latin is spirit to uncover and connect with spirit. And that, again, as I said, when you are in that space, you are present to divinity and you are present and have access. And this is where the downloads come in to information um, that you wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it is simply our space of healing and wisdom. Yes. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Very well said. Oh, I, I love the work that you do. I love the work that you do. I love that you're a big researcher like myself. I love that you have this wealth of knowledge and also that you're open to spirituality. A lot of people who are into science aren't often also into spirituality and seeing how the two go hand in hand and a holistic approach, mind, body, and spirit, and getting to that root cause, seeing everyone as an individual. And then again, my specialty, returning people to joy. So I love that you have that too. We have so much in common. Again, it's been like super synergy to meet you and to learn about your work. And so how can people reach out to learn more about what you do and to potentially work with you? Uh, so you please, I invite everyone to go to my website. My website currently is very neuro based is very, it's almost too steeped in the science. So that's shifting in the next two, three months. Um, but that site is just www.boundlessbreath.us. Uh, so I invite people to go to the website. Uh, my, my name, Megan, M-E-G-A-N, at boundlessbreath.us is a great way to reach me via email. I am starting to post every week on my Instagram account, a new breathwork technique. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so that's also a way to people just sort of, again, experiment and see what serves. Yeah. Uh, and in time, I hope to have a YouTube channel too. Yeah, again, do it. YouTube is wonderful. A, uh, there's so many techniques. And so it's just, let's, let's have people know what they are and have explanation of what they do to you and, and practice and see again, what serves. So I'm, I'm hoping within 2024 to start, start that process. Wonderful. I love it. What a great resource to teach people about the various techniques. You said over 400, over 400, am I correct? That is, that's a lot. So it's very good that you are 
piecemeal it one by one to not overwhelm everyone, not do them all in one day, but uh, just have a little taste, have a little practice. And again, this is a practice. So having a holistic lifestyle is not something you do once. It's not something you do for a couple of weeks. It is a practice that you do every single day to improve your health and wellness, to improve it mind, body, and spirit. So again, thank you so much for the work that you do. Thank you so much for being on here today. Again, everyone check out the links below in the description. All of her links, her email, et cetera, will be there for you to check out. You can just click on it for easy access. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you learned today, if there was something new. If you have a question, ask a question. We will circle back and answer that for you. And again, don't forget to subscribe. So subscribe to my channel, and then you can watch all of the amazing episodes. You will receive an email notification, which will let you know when the next episode has been released. And then you can check out all the amazing guest experts. And also don't forget to go back, go back and watch the ones that you missed and check out the full season, the full series of Holistic Me TV. So if you would like to learn more about myself and the work that I do, you can also go to my website. That's www.thedancingcurtain.com. And of course, you can also join my mailing list, again, to be notified when these new episodes come out. So that's thedancingcurtain.com slash get healthy. And then you will be notified of the new episodes and news and other tips and resources for you. So again, also don't forget to share, share this video. So get the word out about Megan and the great work that she does and how powerful breath work is. So thank you again, Megan, for being a guest on Holistic Me TV. Great to chat with you. I could chat and chat and chat because I love research. I'm a little nerdy that way, but uh, thank you for your time today. And thank you all for watching Holistic Me TV.